Hey guys, today I want to go through two of the most common questions I currently see getting asked. And that is, what is Hyperlapse Cruise Control and how does it work? And what do the settings do in the new Gain and Expo menu that has been added with the DJI Fly App 1.8.0 update? And what are the best values to use? Well, let's take a look at both and jump right in. Firstly, if you use the DJI RCN1 and a phone, make sure to update to the latest fly up version 1.8.0. And if you use the DJI RC, make sure to update to the latest firmware version, which is 1.02.0100. Quickly looking at the update notes, alongside added support for the new Mavic 3 Classic and minor bug fixes, you will see that there is now the ability to close the low battery return to home prompt by using the C1 and C2 buttons on the back of the controller. Now when this prompt appears, you can now use either of these buttons to select an option as shown. Now let's take a look at Hyperlapse Cruise Control. And what this mode does is whenever you're doing a hyperlapse and moving the drone using the joysticks, whatever inputs you're making when you turn on Hyperlapse Cruise Control will get locked in place, meaning you can let go of the controller and the drone will continue to do the move. For example, let's say you're doing an orbit motion during a hyperlapse. If you engage Hyperlapse Cruise Control, you can take your fingers off the joysticks and the drone will continue doing that move, which can be super handy as it means you don't need to hold a particular move for three, four or five minutes during a hyperlapse and it can give you smoother and more consistent movement. So how do we use this mode? Well, first we have to enable it by assigning our C2 button on the controller to activate Hyperlapse Cruise Control. To do this, go to Settings, Control and then scroll down to Button Customization. In here, select the C2 button, and then in the control section, select Hyperlapse Cruise Control. Then go back and go to Free Hyperlapse Mode, and set the parameters for your hyperlapse, such as interval, length, and max speed, before hitting the red start button. Then start to do the motion you want for your hyperlapse. Now it's very important that you start this motion after you've started your hyperlapse, because if you start to move the drone before starting the hyperlapse, you won't actually be able to start it. Then once you're happy with the movement, engage hyperlapse cruise control by pressing the C2 button. You will see a prompt on the left saying cruise control in use, and the flight parameters on the bottom left will turn yellow. At this point, you can take your fingers off the joysticks and the drone will continue to do the move that you were doing. To stop hyperlapse cruise control, you can either press the C2 function button again or just stop the hyperlapse. Moving on to the new Gain and Expo tuning settings menu. You may have already noticed, but with the latest update, the advanced gimbal settings menu is gone. The old advanced gimbal settings and advanced section of the menu has been combined into one. The idea with these settings is that you can tweak how the drone responds to joystick inputs to yourself as a unique flyer. So let me give you two examples. You might be someone who likes a really responsive drone. You've got really good control over the joysticks and you want to control how smooth the drone is with the inputs on the joystick itself. You can tune the drone to be like that. Or if you're like me, you might find it harder to be smooth on the joysticks. I actually find my thumb starts to twitch after holding it in a position for a long period of time, especially as the weather gets colder. And I also find that sometimes I make abrupt movements or just come off the joystick too abruptly. Well, you can actually use these settings to smooth out a lot of that twitchiness. So let's now go through each one of these parameters and demonstrate what they do so that you can go out and play about with the settings to find a setup that works for you or if you want to copy my setup, I'll go through it later in this video. Also, don't be afraid of playing about with these settings, as at the bottom you can reset them to their defaults by tapping Reset Current Settings. And this now works in the DJI Mini 2. I know it wasn't working for a while, but this now works. So, starting at the top, we have three tabs, Cine, Normal, and Sport. And these allow us to set values for each flight mode. So we could have a really fast, responsive drone in Sport mode, but a less responsive, smoother drone in Cine mode, for example. The first option below that is max angular velocity. And this is how fast the drone will yaw or rotate left or right when you're fully pressing the joystick. So if I lower this value all the way to 20 and rotate the drone left, you can see it's turning quite slow. But if I go back in and change this to its highest setting of 120 and then again rotate the drone left, you can see it's turning much faster. The next option is yaw smoothness. And this is a really great feature that can help you get smoother videos. The more you increase this value, the more the drone will smooth out the rotation when you let go of the joystick. For example, if I lower this all the way to zero and start rotating the drone left, whenever I let go of the joystick, the drone comes to an immediate stop. 
However, if I change this to its max setting of 100 and again rotate the drone and let go of the joystick, you can see it continues to rotate while slowly coming to a stop. So this is a really great feature if you find it hard to bring the drone to a smooth, steady stop in your cinematic videos, by increasing this value, you can actually get the drone to come to a smooth stop for you. Scrolling down and we have the Expo settings. Now the Expo settings allow you to change how responsive the drone is to the joystick movement as you move it further and further away from the center point. So if I set the pitch and roll Expo to its lowest setting, you can see we have quite a flat line before it curves upward. Now this means that when I first start moving the joystick away from the center, the drone doesn't move until I have the joystick closer towards the edges and then the drone starts to move quite quickly. Now this is obviously too extreme as you go from basically no movement to full speed very quickly. If I go back and set the Expo to its highest setting, you can see we get a large vertical line. And what this means is the second I move the joystick away from the center point, we almost get full speed straight away. What I recommend is whenever you're out flying your drone, set these values to both extremes so you get a feeling of how it changes the responsiveness of the drone. Now, ideally we want to use this setting to tune out any jerkiness or any jerky movement the drone would make because of twitchiness on the joysticks by making the joystick less responsive towards the center of the joystick movement. And you can set this independently for pitch and roll, yaw, and up and down. And these can be set for the normal and sport modes. The Expo setting is not available for the Cine mode. Lastly, we have our gimbal settings. Firstly, max control speed is how quickly the gimbal moves when you use the scroll wheel. So if we set it to the lowest value of one, when I use the scroll wheel to move the gimbal, you can see it moves very slowly. If we increase this to 100, you can see when using the scroll wheel, it moves very fast. The tilt smoothness is just like the yaw smoothness. And when this is set high, it will buffer out the movement of the gimbal so that it comes to a smooth, steady stop whenever you just let go of the scroll wheel. Setting it to zero will mean the gimbal comes to a stop straight away when you let go of the scroll wheel. Again, this setting can be super useful if you find it hard to smoothly come off the scroll wheel when bringing your gimbal to a stop. By setting this value higher, the drone will actually bring that gimbal to a slow, steady stop for you helping you get smooth cinematic videos. Now, if you want to use my settings or even use my settings as a starting point, I will put them on the screen now so that you can simply translate them onto your own controller. Now, the way I have these settings geared is that I do most of my cinematic moves in normal mode. I think it's the perfect compromise between cine and sport. Sport mode is normally too fast for cinematic moves, but if up high, cine is sometimes too slow to convey motion. You need to move the drone fast when you're up high to convey that motion. And for that, I use normal mode most of the time. Sport mode, I use for getting into position quickly. So when I want to get to my point of interest really fast, get the shot lined up, I'll put it into sport mode. So I've geared my sport settings to be more useful for getting into position quickly. But I have increased my yaw and gimbal smoothness slightly just so the drone buffers out some of that movement. I mainly use cine mode when low to the ground or close to subjects to get them slow, cinematic, subtle movements. And again, I've increased the yaw and gimbal smoothness just to buffer out some of that movement. So hopefully now you know how to use hyperlapse cruise control mode to get epic hyperlapses and how to use the new gain and expo tuning settings menu to get smooth cinematic motion with your drone. Now, if you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get cinematic videos and epic photos with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure that subscribe button is checked and that the notification bell is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to stick around and see a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. And I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.